Welcome, today we're taking a tour of the San Diego Zoo. At over 100 acres, it's a pretty big park, so today I'll get as much footage as I can of as many animals as possible, and along the way I'll share tips and tricks that you can use to plan your next trip to the San Diego Zoo. The zoo first opened in 1916 here at Balboa Park. The park is easy to navigate, but there's lots of canyon and valley trails. But the great thing is, there's a lot of fun ways to get around the park that don't require too much walking. The first thing I'd recommend is taking the bus tour, which will take you on a guided tour around the park and give you a good idea of the layout of the park. And next I'd recommend the Skyfari, which is a one-way sky tram that takes you from one side of the park to the opposite end and back. It's a great opportunity to see just how big the San Diego Zoo is from above, and in the distance you can also see Balboa Park and downtown San Diego. And then there's the Kangaroo Bus with stops all around the park where you can sit at the bus stop and every 15 minutes or so a bus will arrive to take you to any of the stops that you'd like to visit. It's really amazing, there's a wide variety of animals, so many activities and things to do. So let's see how much we can experience and do in one day at the San Diego Zoo. When you first enter the park, there's gift shops and restaurants and so many things to see. But one of the first things I recommend doing is grabbing a map or if you haven't yet, download the San Diego Zoo app which will have information about the animals, show times, and much more. Throughout the park, you'll see volunteers, and typically they wear a red San Diego Zoo polo shirt. They'll help you with directions, tell you about the park, and even share information about the animals. If it's your first time visiting, I highly recommend the bus tour. The tour guides are helpful and entertaining, and they'll share information about the history of the park and the animals. Now there's a lot of animals to see, so let's get started. At the front of the park past guest services is Treetops Way. This leads right to one of my favorite places to visit, the siamangs and orangutans. These orangutans are so playful and fun to watch. Usually when I visit, they're either climbing through the ropes, playing tag, swinging in the hammocks, or rolling around in the dirt. They're often just as interested in people as we are in them, so you might see them up against the glass staring right back at you. Here's a baby orangutan in the hammock, and this one looks like he's dropping food on his friend. Next door are the pygmy hippos, where you can watch them either lounging on the sand or swimming in the aquarium. I read that there's only 2,000 left in the wild, and it's really hard to find them because they're mostly nocturnal animals. And surprisingly, just a few feet away are these crocodiles, which on this day I was lucky to see up close. Nearby is another amazing place to visit with one of the most fascinating animals, the gorillas. These powerful animals come from the tropical forests near Africa's equator. Gorillas are the largest living primates known for their stocky build and muscular figure. They're herbivores and eat up to 40 pounds of food per day. Being very social, they live in groups of up to 30 members, typically led by one or two related silverbacks. They're also one of our closest relatives, sharing 98% of the same DNA. And as you can see, they even share some of our same behaviors. Just next door is another one of our distant relatives and one of my favorite places to visit, the bonobos. Because of their close relation, they're sometimes referred to as pygmy chimpanzees. But chimpanzees actually co-evolved on the north side of the Congo River with the bonobos to the south. Bonobos are mostly frugivorous eaters, meaning that they eat mostly plants, fruits, but sometimes meat. They have complex social dynamics in matriarchal groups led by female elders. Bonobos live in peaceful communities, sharing close to 99% of the same DNA as us. If you visit the zoo, I highly recommend visiting the bonobos. It's incredibly fascinating to observe their behaviors and catch a glimpse of just how much we have in common. Nearby, along the Tiger Trail, which is a simulation of a tropical Asian rainforest, you'll find the Malayan tigers. These tigers are critically endangered with less than 250 left in the wild. Coming from the tropical forests and grasslands of Malaysia, their habitats have been threatened by deforestation. The San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance has been instrumental in helping to preserve this species, with four Malaysian tiger cubs being born within the last decade. From 1996 till 2019, the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance made significant contributions to the conservation of pandas. Their home was a themed area called the Asian Passage, but once they returned to China, different animals moved in. These Amur leopards come from southeastern Russia and northern China. They're known for their agility, running up to 37 miles per hour and jumping 10 feet off the ground. 
From the eastern Himalayas and southwestern China are the red pandas. With a body similar to a bear, but the size of a cat, they're actually more related to skunks and weasels than pandas or bears. They're mostly active at the dawn or dusk hours and eat mostly bamboo, fruits, nuts, or roots. Near the red pandas, you'll see the takins, which are from the eastern Himalayas. They're sometimes called goat antelope. Near the center of the park is the Bashar Bridge, and there's an elevator leading up to it. And because much of the zoo is built around this valley, you can walk downhill from almost anywhere to this point. In other words, if you plan ahead, you'll never have to walk uphill. Heading over the Bashar Bridge leads to the northern frontier. This is the other end of the Sky Fori, so if you need to get to the front of the park quickly, you can just hop on here. The Northern Territory is also home to one of the most popular animals here at the park. But first you'll need to walk a little ways to get to the polar bear exhibit. On the way, you'll see the Chacoan peccary, an endangered pig-like mammal from South America. And there's the graceful Southern Garanook, a mid-sized antelope from Eastern Africa. Here's the Bontabok, another antelope, but from Southern Africa. Bontabok are another conservation success story having been brought back from the brink of extinction in the early 20th century. And here's the Speaks gazelle, the smallest of the gazelle species. I think they may have been a little confused by my camera, so I made sure to give them some space. And after a short walk down this hill, we reach Conrad Preby's Polar Bear Plunge. The Polar Bear Plunge is a simulated Arctic environment where you can see polar bears up close, under and above the water. There's interactive zones, life-size models that you can take pictures with, and a play area for children. One of the best times to visit is during the trainer talks when they feed the bears and you can see them up close eating their favorite snacks. You can find the schedule for all of the trainer talks using the San Diego Zoo app. Polar bears are native to the Arctic and they're the largest of all bear species. They evolved from brown bears, branching off and adapting on their own about 500,000 years ago. Their fur became lighter for camouflage, and their feet adapted to become like snowshoes. Their hunting behavior and even teeth changed as they began to rely on seals as their primary source of food. For me, this is one of the highlights of the zoo. It's incredibly fascinating watching their behaviors, and I highly recommend visiting. Nearby is the elusive maned wolf. And of all the times I've been to the San Diego Zoo, I've only seen them twice. Most of the time, they like to hide in their den. So we were lucky this time to get a few close-up shots. Maned wolves are not actually wolves. In fact, they're much older, with fossil records going back as far as 4 million years. Unlike most other canids, they don't live in packs or herds. They prefer to live a solitary life. A few steps away is one of the most interactive areas of the park, the Elephant Odyssey. The 7.5 acre exhibit opened in 2009, and it was one of the largest redevelopment efforts at the zoo. The Elephant Odyssey has a unique theme. It showcases various animal species or their descendants that lived in Southern California during the last ice age. One of the first animals you'll encounter is the African lion. And this takes us to the origin of the San Diego Zoo. In 1916, during the Panama, California Exposition, a surgeon by the name of Dr. Harry Wedgeforth was driving through the area and heard the sound of a distant lion's roar. One of the showcases at the exposition included animals from around the world. And this moment inspired Dr. Harry Wedgeforth to establish a zoo in San Diego. We're all about encouraging their natural behaviors. Sometimes they drag their prey to wherever they want to eat it. So that's what I'm going to try and encourage. It might just come right off, um, but we shall see. And for over 100 years, the lion has been a symbol of the San Diego Zoo. The original lion's name was Rex, and today you can find Rex on the San Diego Zoo logo and at the front gate of the park with the 27-foot-tall bronze statue called Rex's Roar. Next to the lion exhibit are a series of life-size statues that you can take pictures with. And nearby is one of my favorite animals to visit, the jaguar. You can tell a jaguar by its distinctive rosette formation on its fur. An interesting fact about jaguars is they have the strongest bite force of all the cats at around 1,500 pounds per square inch, which is twice as strong as a tiger. And right next door you can find one of the animals that jaguars prey upon, the Baird's Taper. 
These tapirs are highly adaptable animals living in the tropical rainforests, swamps, and grasslands of Mexico, Central, and South America. Throughout the area, you'll find interesting displays and information about life during the Ice Age. You'll pass the Elephant Care Center, a state-of-the-art facility where they take care of the elephants, and nearby are the African elephants, known for their large tusks and their ears shaped like the continent of Africa. In the wild, elephants play a major role in maintaining suitable habitats for other animals. Their behavior helps to disperse seeds, which aids in forest regeneration. Elephants face many threats in the wild from poaching to habitat loss, and organizations such as the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance play a vital role to protect and preserve elephants. It's interesting to think that up to about 15,000 years ago, camels just like these lived all throughout North America. And for close to 40 million years, llamas and alpacas thrived in the North American Great Plains. One of the theories is that about 12,000 years ago, a comet impacted Earth. There's evidence at over 50 sites in North America of a uniform black layer of sediment found above fossils and stone tools. It's thought that this was caused by large-scale fires and that a massive extinction occurred due to global cooling after the comet impact. A short distance away is the outback area at the zoo, and this is where you'll find the koalas. These iconic animals are native to Australia. They're often mistaken for bears, but they're actually marsupials. They have a very picky diet, and they eat leaves from the eucalyptus tree, which is very toxic and requires a lot of digestive effort, and this is why they sleep for 18 to 22 hours a day. This was originally the first elephant enclosure, and right now the hippos are staying here while their habitat is renovated. Hippos are the third largest land mammals after elephants and rhinos, and they spend most of their time in the water. Just a few feet away are the world's fastest land mammals. Cheetahs are built for speed, hunting animals like gazelles and impala. They're able to run up to 75 miles per hour for short bursts. A cousin to horses and donkeys, zebras are one of the most recognizable mammals. They travel in large herds, and in the wild, they're constantly on the move looking for fresh grass and water. The San Diego Zoo is home to Maasai Giraffe, and they're the tallest land animals known for their long necks, legs, and distinctive spotted coats. Nearby, on Center Street, is where you can find the bears here at the zoo. These sloth bears are native to India, and they use their long muzzles to eat insects. Next door are two grizzly bear brothers named Scout and Montana. They were born in Yellowstone Park and moved to the zoo in 2007 after their mother taught them to look for food in human-occupied areas. Andean bears are the only bears native to South America. And in December 2022, the zoo welcomed the birth of two Andean bear cubs. Africa Rocks is one of the newest trails here at the San Diego Zoo. It showcases the biodiversity of the African continent. It opened in July of 2017 and features six different habitats from the seashores to the savannas. One of the main exhibits features over 20 Hamadryas baboons. Native to the Horn of Africa and the Arabian Peninsula, they were revered by ancient Egyptians and associated with Thoth, the god of wisdom, writing, and the moon. Gelada baboons, also known as bleeding heart baboons, can be recognized by the distinctive hourglass-shaped mark on their chest. Walking down the trail, you'll notice these large mesh structures designed to blend with the natural surroundings. They separate each enclosure, serving as a boundary between exhibits. In March of 2023, the San Diego Zoo welcomed the birth of two Amur leopard cubs. It was a result of their breeding program and is significant due to their critically endangered status. And after a few months, you can already see how big they are next to their mother. Continuing down the trail, you'll find the woodland aviary. Here you can observe dozens of African bird species. Near the bottom of the trail, you'll find the largest man-made waterfall in San Diego. This is a great place to stop during the warm summer days and you can even walk behind the waterfall. And I'd say it's probably one of the most popular places to take a picture at the zoo. Near the end of the trail, you'll see African penguins. They spend most of their time in the waters off the South African coast, hunting small fish like sardines and anchovies. The bottom of the Africa Rocks Trail leads to the center of the park. Here you'll find a cafe and gift shop, 
and now we'll head up the elevators toward the front of the park to see the monkey trail. The trail is an elevated walkway that takes visitors through a tree canopy where you can see rare and endangered monkeys. These tufted capuchin from South America are one of the few monkeys that uses stones to open nuts. And next door, the mandrill is known for its distinct red and blue coloring. They live in equatorial Africa, and they're one of the largest monkeys. And despite having long canines, they actually eat fruit and nuts. These Angolan colobus monkeys come from the Congo Basin. They spend their time in the trees eating leaves and they're known for their acrobatic abilities. When you visit, you'll most likely see them swinging from branch to branch or practicing social behaviors like grooming. Now heading back towards the front of the park, you can't miss the brand new children's zoo, otherwise known as the Wildlife Explorers Base Camp. The 3.2 acre facility has four different wildlife zones. These include the rainforest, the wild woods, marsh meadows, and desert dunes. You'll find plenty of interactive play areas with themes of wildlife conservation. One of the main attractions is the Spineless Marvels building. As you enter the building, you're transported to a world of insects, crustaceans, and arachnids, many of which you might never have a chance to see in the wild. Some of the insects here are so well camouflaged, I'm surprised anyone found them in the first place. The upper level has interactive exhibits, games, and even trainer presentations. The insects here are known as invertebrates, meaning they don't have a spine. Instead, they have an exoskeleton and a three-part body with a head, thorax, and abdomen. Further along is a themed area dedicated to bees. Here you can see a western honeybee's hive and all the work they do to produce and preserve honey. There's also an area dedicated to the life cycle of the butterfly. You'll learn about the stages from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to the adult stage. At the bottom level, you'll find a collection of arachnids, otherwise known as spiders. There's a variety of tarantulas, which are hairy spiders from tropical environments. They eat everything from insects to larger prey, like frogs, toads, and even mice. There's also a space for the subterranean rodents, the naked mole rats. And there's a whole area dedicated to the super organism we know as ants. Between the main exhibits, you can see exotic animals such as the coati and the caracal. And this leads to the Cool Critters Building, an interactive space featuring a diverse range of wildlife, including snakes, amphibians, crocodiles, turtles, and lizards. This is a great place to stop to learn about conservation, explore the interactive exhibits, or admire their collection of fossils. The downstairs level has a number of aquariums where you can see aquatic reptiles and amphibians. Possibly one of the most well-known animals here is a salamander that you can find in the lakes of central Mexico, the axolotl. Axolotls are critically endangered in their native habitats. They're known for their unique ability to regenerate lost body parts, including limbs, their spinal cord, and even parts of their brain. And just outside in the marsh meadows, you can see dwarf crocodiles. The path leads to a place structure called the Tree of Dreams, and a water play area that's popular during the summers. The surrounding enclosures have popular animals like the prairie dog or the fennec fox, and these high-flying, adventurous squirrel monkeys. Just outside of the Wildlife Explorers Base Camp is one of the San Diego Zoo's oldest buildings, the Reptile House. The Reptile House has glass enclosures all around the perimeter of the building, showcasing exotic and rare snakes from around the world. Here you'll see everything from rattlesnakes to cobras and vipers. In Southern California, some of these snakes even live in our own backyards, so it's always good to stop by and see what to keep an eye out for. Just behind the reptile house is an area that a lot of people miss, and this is called the Reptile Walk. Here you'll see a variety of amphibians, including these frogs, from all around the world. 
Here you can see the zookeepers feeding vegetables and lettuce to the turtles. This is an interesting habitat because you can see there's also multiple gharials in the pool. And gharials are crocodiles with skinny snouts that they use to detect and catch fish. Next are enclosures to various different types of tortoises. And this includes the largest tortoise in the world, the Galapagos tortoise. They can weigh up to 900 pounds and have a lifespan of over 100 years. The oldest known Galapagos tortoise named Harriet lived for at least 175 years. And this makes them one of the longest lived subspecies in the animal kingdom. Nearby is the entrance to the Sky Fari. Since it first opened in 1969, the Sky Fari has provided transportation and aerial views of the San Diego Zoo. The one-way ride takes about four minutes and leads directly to the other side of the park. From the Sky Fari, you have a clear view of Treetops Way, the Scripps Aviary, and Balboa Park in the distance. You can even see downtown San Diego. Down below, you can see the gorilla habitat that we visited earlier. There's the Africa Rocks Trail in the distance, and the Basher Bridge below. Here's the iconic California Tower at Balboa Park and the Cabrillo Bridge overlooking downtown San Diego. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new today, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you enjoy content about the San Diego Zoo, the Safari Park, SeaWorld, Southern California, and beyond, subscribe because we have much more coming. I really appreciate you and thank you for spending your time here. Now, if you'd like to explore the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, there's still much more to see. Click right here to continue the journey. I'll see you in the next video.